it's so it's such a sad story it's a really unfortunate situation because like like i don't think alec baldwin is at fault you know what i mean obviously the real victim in this situation is alina hutchins the award-winning cinematographer who was shot and killed it's really fucked up that it happened but like i'm not gonna i don't think anyone is like fucking blaming alec baldwin maybe some people are i don't know director of photography and also the movie director uh director of photography was killed by alec baldwin and the movie director was injured by alec baldwin when uh a discharge prop firearm on a movie set had some issues of course this comes in the middle of the yatse uh conversation so that makes it even more prescient uh overall like this is literally part of the uh issues that uh, people talk about you know long hours more prone to making mistakes putting people in like uh, horrible conditions dangerous conditions let's 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 watch let's take a look at what's going on here we begin with breaking news on a shooting in new mexico involving actor alec baldwin sheriffs say that one person was killed and another was injured when baldwin fired a prop gun on a movie set he has not been charged with a crime he was questioned after yesterday's shooting jesus christ bro they're like fucking they're like taking photos of this dude what the fuck? and then he was released the movie cinematographer 42 year old halina hutchins died in this incident director joel souza was treated at a hospital for unspecified injuries the circumstances of the incident are under investigation according to movie set gun safety expert larry zanoff a gun loaded with blanks has gunpowder but should have no projectiles still he says it's potentially dangerous to be within 20 feet of a prop gun when fired any of that smoke or powder or that muzzle flash that could affect anyone or anything again we keep a standoff distance of 20 feet in order for there to be no effect on something that's in front of the this happened to bruce lee some brandon lee on the set of crow as well by the way like this is not a new thing this has happened in the past as well the news of the tragic accident on the set of Alec Baldwin film Russ is Hollywood reeling, but it's not the first devastating accident on a film production. This exact same thing happened to Bruce Lee's son, Brandon Lee, on the set of Crow, where he was shot and killed by a prop gun. Or, or I guess it's technically not a prop gun. It's like a real gun, but with blanks in it. Puzzle. In 1993, actor Brandon Lee was killed on a movie set when he was shot with a gun supposedly loaded with blanks. An autopsy later revealed he was shot by a bullet. And in 1984, actor John Eric Hexum died after he fired a prop Magnum 44 with blanks at his head in a mock game of Russian roulette. We're always concerned with safety on a television and uh, motion picture set, and that's why there's guidelines to follow. And detectives are now investigating how firing the prop gun resulted in death and injury, and they're continuing to interview witnesses. Production, meanwhile, on the film has been halted. What is this? Props to history? Uh, recently, uh, IATSE Local 44, which is uh, the union that oversees a lot of behind the scenes folks on the West Coast, um, confirmed that the accidental discharge of the firearm on the set of Rust in Santa Fe uh, involved the discharge of a single live cartridge. The types of firearms used isn't it because like sometimes they have like a dummy round or whatever and they forget to take it out like or they don't know that there's another round in there like there's a live round in there and they forget to take it out when they're putting the blanks in used in the filming of rust because it is set in the old west are what are called single action uh, they require a manual uh, mechanical operation to bring each round into firing position much in the same way that a pump action shotgun requires the pumping action to bring a shotgun shell into battery for it to fire. Uh, the revolvers of that period uh, required the cocking of a hammer which rotated a cylinder which placed a round into firing position. Somehow a live cartridge ended up on set, a live full power cartridge. And uh, when the weapon was handed to Alec Baldwin, uh, it was loaded with a live round. How the fuck? how like it has to be deliberate from what i understand this is from robert evans but uh i i saw last night that he was talking about how the armor is oftentimes responsible for accidents like this like the negligence comes from multiple uh different uh avenues but certainly from the armor and blank versus live rounds oh yeah so it's still this is the part that's like filled with, filled with gunpowder and this is the bullet right 
Like this is the projectile that flies out when it gets hit in the back, I guess. Like when it, and a blank does not have that projectile. So it still has that same pop, same kickback, but it just doesn't, there's no, there's no round that fucking flies out of it and hits something. Now this is rifle ammo. These are live rounds versus blank rounds on a rifle. They were using, I think, is, was it a revolver or was it a shotgun? Better image of a pistol ammo versus a blank. Brandon Lee's situation was, you know, similar. It, it was the lack of awareness uh, and paying attention. I think that it, it certainly just like when Sarah Jones was tragically killed in an accident, it always brings awareness and, and, and more of a spotlight onto the industry on what safety measures are in place on, on film sets. Uh, firearm safety is number one. It always has been. Like I mentioned before, it's uh, within our industry, we have an industry-wide uh, safety committee. Uh, it's bulletin number one, firearm safety. Um, situations like this should never, ever happen. Unfortunately, whether it's inexperience, uh, whether it's budgetary issues, whatever it is um it should never ever have happened alec baldwin getting involuntary manslaughter fuck no absolutely fucking lootly not dude you're out of your fucking mind if you think that first of all he's like straight up incredibly anti-gun it's literally not his fault it's more so the fault of like an armor or a person who was a person who like did not fucking uh, do the proper uh, safety checks and even then it i think alec baldwin is fucked regardless like dude you, you just murdered your director of cinematography like that's it, it's like that that shit will that will break you i suspect but he was also a producer as a producer of the film he must hold some responsibility guys yeah, uh, having a producer credit on the movie that you're filming is entirely different than like a person who specializes on like the actual production side that is dedicated to making sure that there's safety checks on the gun. Point blank with a blank gun, gun is it dangerous? The very fast stream of gas it shoots out of the vent holes can generate contact pressures high enough to damage many soft materials, including of course the human body. So shooting the blank gun with any part of the body in close proximity to it can result in injuries that, in case of little distance between the vent holes and the body parts, can be very serious. Of course, styrofoam is not the strongest material, but it clearly shows the path and shape of the vented jet. To show the effects against something a little more resistant, I got this expired juice brick and tested it against the blank pistol. The gas jet pierced it and blew it open spraying gas with juice. Oh, he's showing like the discharge alone can be, uh, the discharge alone, uh, could fucking hurt people. Listen, the only, the only way that, uh, Alec Baldwin gets into trouble here is if he's like firing it willy nilly, you know what I mean? That's it. If he was just like casually fucking, you know, messing around with it or something. What can come out of a blank gun? If a prop gun is supposed to only have blanks, how is it then that something could come out of it, a projectile? Anytime you're dealing with a gunpowder load, which is what's in a prop weapon that fires blanks, you're going to have gas, you're going to have heat, you're going to have air coming out of it. Even though there's no actual physical projectile mounted on the front of that weapon, on, on the cartridge, there is projectiles that do come out, the powder, the gas, and those can cause physical injury within 25 to 50 feet, depending on the load. Within 25 to 50 feet, that's actually some distance if you think of a film set and how close people could be behind the camera. Very true, and that's why we take extreme caution when we- This is behind the scenes showing uh, the, the camera operator and the prop gun. I'm having a hard time understanding how this accident still happens in 2021. It's so close. What the fuck? How do you guys think films are made, bro? Of course it's close. What, how do you think they capture angles and shit like that? This right here isn't even bulletproof glass, by the way. That's just like plexiglass, which could easily get uh, a bullet could easily pierce through. Alex Press, who's been, uh, you know, 
covering the Yatsi strikes as a thread on the matter. Now, this is again, I want to repeat, not confirmed. This is first and second hand accounts of working conditions that led to the uh, led, that led to Helena Hutchins' death are flying among the uh, Yatsi people, but I haven't confirmed them. Anyone can actually speak to what happened. Feel free to DM or email me if you're in here and you want to talk. Alex is a great person to talk to about this sort of stuff. Can't pretend to know if Nerdbot is a reliable source, but this accords with what I've heard. Safety meeting scrapped, crew had walked and been replaced. The gun wasn't checked. As to the very specific unreal allegations being passed around in DMs, those really require confirmation. But according to a uh, nerdbot says, according to a source on the production who will remain anonymous, but allowed us to run this comment, there had already been issues on set. Source says the entire camera team walked off set earlier in the day due to complaints about safety. Uh, apparently the union camera crew was replaced with folks from a local film school. No safety meetings, no gun checks. There had already been misfirings. There had already been complaints about safety to production for over a week. Production solution was to start looking for a new camera team who wouldn't complain. It was a really hard choice for them to leave because they really liked Helena. They're devastated. It was a real gun with allegedly 44 rounds in it. The producers new and continue to shoot and the camera crew that walked absolutely blamed them for it i mean this seems a little fucking over the top don't take this uh, at face value there needs to be confirmations before you fucking get no I, I shouldn't have even read that this is why i don't like fucking reading uh some of these threads okay it's one fucking comment i i'm i know la times wrote about it as well but we don't know yet. There needs to be confirmations. That's a major, major, major fucking... That's like a major fucking accusation, okay? It's criminal. Hours before actor Alec Baldwin fatally shot a cinematographer on the New Mexico set of Rust with a prop gun, half a dozen camera crews worked walked off the, set, uh, off the set to protest the working conditions. Camera operators and their assistants were frustrated by the conditions surrounding the low-budget film, including complaints of long hours and pay, according to three people familiar with the matter, who were not authorized to comment. The camera crew showed up for work as expected at 6.30 a.m. Thursday, and began gathering up the gear and personal belongings to leave, one knowledgeable crew member told LA Times. Labor trouble had been brewing for days on the dusty set at the Bonanza Creek Ranch near Santa Fe. Shooting began on October 6th, and members of the production said they'd been promised the production would pay for their hotel rooms in Santa Fe. Cinematographer Helena Hutchins killed by a prop gun just as her career was taking off. Alec uh, on a set of the Alec Baldwin was going to be very famous a director who worked with her set. But after filming began, the crews were told they instead would be required to make the 50 mile drive from Albuquerque each day rather than stay overnight in nearby Santa Fe. Remember, this directly is in line with demands that uh, workers make. You are saying, what? That's crazy. This is what I've told you guys a million times over. This is the type of shit that Hollywood big budget fucking productions pull on a regular basis. You're working fucking 14 hours a day, sometimes 17 hours a day, and you are, imagine like you're working 17 hours and then you have a fucking one hour drive both ways on top of that. That's 19 fucking hours. You have no time to sleep. No time to sleep whatsoever. It's just absolute fucking garbage work conditions. Uh, the cinematographer who was accidentally killed, Helena Hutchins, had been advocating for safer conditions for her team, said one crew member who was on the set. As the camera crew, new members of the International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees spent about an hour assembling their gear at the Bonanza Creek Ranch. Several non-union crew members showed up to replace them, the knowledgeable person said. A member of the producer's staff then ordered the union members to leave the set. She said if it... if they didn't leave. The producers would call security to remove them. Corners were being cut and they brought in non-union people so they could continue shooting. The knowledgeable person said there were two misfires on the prop gun and one the previous week. The person said, adding there was a serious lack of safety meetings on the set. A representative for the production company did not immediately comment. The entire cast and crew had been absolutely devastated by today's tragedy. And we sent our deepest condolences to Helena's family and loved ones. Shooting occurred about six hours after the union camera crew left. Baldwin, the film star who also served as a producer on the film, was apparently rehearsing a scene outside the church, according to two knowledgeable people. The scene involved a gunfight that began in the church, and then Baldwin's character was supposed to back out of the church, according to the notes uh, obtained, the production notes obtained. The Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office said deputies were dispatched to the Bonanza Creek Ranch movie set where filming was underway for the Western Rust after calls to 911 at 1.50 p.m. Baldwin was starring in the movie in addition to serving as one of the producers. No charges have been filed, but sh the Sheriff's Office said witnesses continue to be interviewed by detectives. Baldwin said Friday he's fully cooperating with the police investigation into the incident. There are no words to convey my shock and sadness, 
witness regarding the tragic accident that took the life of Helena Hutchins, a wife, mother, and deeply admired colleague of ours, Baldwin wrote on Friday in a series of tweets. Production has been halted. In an email to its members, Local 44 of Ayatse, uh, a union that represents the prop makers, said that uh, the shot that killed Hutchins and injured director Joel Souza on Thursday was a live single round. As many of us have already heard there was an accidental weapon discharge on a production titled Rust being filmed in New Mexico, said the North Hollywood-based local. A live single round was accidentally fired on set by the principal actor hitting both the director of photography, uh, local 600 member Helena Hutchins, and director Joel D'Souza. Both were rushed to the hospital. A source close to the time said the union does not know what projectile was in a gun and clarified that live is an industry term that refers to a gun being loaded with some material such as a blank ready for filming. So they, they don't, I, I don't think they mean like there was a fucking real ammo in there. So that's the, that's the story thus far. Okay. Even when it's a safety failure, dudes are working to the fucking bone. That's again, negligence on behalf more so of the bosses rather than the fucking workers in that situation. The worker is negligent for sure. But like if you're working 17 fucking hours a day and then two hour commutes uh, and you're half falling asleep at 6 30 when you're supposed to be like looking at the fucking live rounds like i i personally think the guy handling the fucking guns should most likely or or should definitely get enough fucking sleep you know what i mean have like uh some make sure that the mental uh, acuity is there to be able to uh adequately deal with the with the uh, safety issues on fucking set but maybe i'm just crazy yeah, there's already fake news running around, uh, probably. So I don't want to, I want to be as careful as possible. It's very, I mean, but the part of the story that is actually directly tied back to the Iatse conversation is that it's very related to what the crew members have been talking about during the Iatse negotiations. Short turnaround times, long days, cost cutting on labor all lead to dangerous situations. That's 100% true. Like this is, this is, it's high profile, but there's like low profile shit that goes on on a regular basis on these sets from just abuse, to skipping lunch, to literally fucking car crash that workers get into on their way back to a fucking long ass commute 50 miles away just so they can fall asleep on their fucking couch you know this is this happens regularly in this grueling industry where you know you're being worked to the fucking bone and you're doing it because you got skin in the game you love it you want to make movies this is your fucking dream your entire life and then all of a sudden your dream is snuffed out right in front of your eyes like you just you get fucking killed by a prop gun on a set it's so devastating not say local 44 is the union for props in la hollywood area one huge question everyone has whether the people props people working people were union or non-union also I assume there was an armor on set on a day before the tragic shooting on the set of rust movie a crew member on the film commented on a pro ayatsa instagram video by actor producer alec baldwin complaining about unsafe work hours i'm literally on the show in new mexico with him and the producers on that movie are treating the local crew like fucking dog shit absolute dog shit at the moment i'm fighting to get my crew on this movie Hotel rooms. Oh yeah, we we already confirmed this with LA Times as well. Hotel rooms when we go long or too tired to drive an hour back from location to Albuquerque to either say no or offer a garbage roadside motel that's used as a homeless shelter. In fact, the line producer on the flick complained the motel she booked charges her ten bucks more per night than the homeless. They haven't even paid a crew a proper check. My B sec second had to sleep in his fucking car. My my second i had to sleep in his fucking car on sunday night because they won't give him a room and he was too tired to drive uh, an, the hour home nobody on, on any production should have to sleep in the cold in their car at base camp to not die driving home adrian already have called my ba and he's fully involved the show keeps arguing they don't have to do anything because contract minimums don't force them to in fact in the low budget agreement a hotel doesn't need to be provided until 14 worked hours and this show's doing our lunches so it requires a 15 hour elapsed day before they will volunteer a hotel. Remember, they will never do this unless you fight for it because they're, they will cut the costs in any capacity they can, unless you literally fucking fight for it. And that's the only way that you can do it through, you know, uh, filing grievances and like through a union anyway.